Now here's another good reason to take that light fixture down. Have you thought about it yet? Well, let's say you're in a bathroom. It's an older bathroom and you end up painting around the light fixture and the light fixture comes way out real far on both sides. Maybe it's a tall one, uh, you know, seven and a half inches tall, let's say the, the whole thing. And you go ahead and paint around it. And then down the road, you decide to replace the light fixture. Well, a lot of times you might not be able to find one with the same base as tall as the one that you have, as long as the one that you have, or something like that. And maybe you take it out, you put the new one in, and now, oh man, I've got to, I've got to cut in all the way at the bottom, up at the top, or around the middle, because your base was just a little, uh, you know, kind of a fat square one, but you got one that was a little bit smaller square one, and now you have to cut in around it. And uh, maybe you don't have the paint anymore or something like that, or you've got to, you know, get the paint can out, and it's a year and a half old, and it doesn't match, and there's rust all in it and all kinds of goobers in it, and you put it on the wall, and it doesn't exactly match or something like that. Another good reason to go ahead and paint, uh, take your light fixture down. It doesn't take that long to do that, okay? You saw. And so that's why I do it. And incidentally, before I installed that light fixture from before, there was a big old hole here and nothing. The wires just came out of the wall in about a two inch hole. So I, so I ended up getting a, a, a cut in box, installing that. I've got that on my videos somewhere under electrical. You can go to my uh, YouTube ch main channel page, click on playlists, go down, scroll down to electrical. You'll find it in those videos, okay? I didn't want to have the wires just coming out. By code, you're supposed to have your wires coming out of the wall in a box. Before, there was no box. Could I have installed that channel and just put some plastic anchors in and left a hole there and had the wires come in? Yeah, but would it have been per code? No. Okay, so remember that when you're installing a light fixture. You know, before, before I installed that other light fixture that I just took down, years ago they had just an oblong one that fit in here. And it cracked me up too because it looked like uh, it was dug down below the sheetrock right in here. And it also had looked like they did a drywall repair kind of in this area years later and they never took that light fixture down because you can see how it's not been painted around there last time they painted uh, which was probably seven eight years ago this 15 year old condo 17 year old condo now um, that they never took that light fixture down after the first coat of paint the first coat of paint was probably white and they just left it up there and so now when I get ready to put mine in, had I not painted, I would have had that mark down below and up above. And I don't, obviously I don't have any of this uh, matching paint or anything like that. So once I took it down, I saw that that needed to be kind of finished a little bit better right in there. So I put some caulking there. Now I gotta let that dry too. And I've already put caulking up there. I ended up putting the caulking down down here and some other areas that need to be dry before I get ready to, to start painting. And while I'm waiting to, for that to dry and stuff, I'm gonna look at this. Whoever caulked this, and it might have been me when I initially was getting ready to paint all this, I think I thought that this was a clear silicone. And I thought, oh, let's just put it along here and finish that off. Well. It, it, the clear silicone actually looks like white, doesn't it? And so I'm going to scrape all that out. I started scraping it out right in here. You can see, you know, I just take a little razor blade and I'll, I'll uh, do that here real quick while I'm waiting for this stuff to dry. Because after that dries and after my other caulking area is dry, I'll have to look at that after the uh, first caulking skins up if I have to put a little bit more on there. It's a process, like I said, before you get ready to start painting. 
And uh, then um, I'll do some other stuff. I'll get my paint buckets out and I do all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, then I'll do everything right. I'll put the kills on these different areas first. Let that dry. I might even put two coats of kills. Who knows? Before I start dipping into the finished paint. Okay, step by step, you can do your project. All right. Now, incidentally, before you take that U-shaped channel off and before you start undoing your screws and all that kind of stuff, invariably, if you don't close this, you drop a screw over a sink, guess where the screw usually goes? Down the drain. If that happens, you can still get to it. There's an adjustable P-trap underneath here. See, you'd have to take that P-trap apart and then this screw will be down in there. It's a big song and dance process. You're not going to have water going all over the place. Pop that down just for insurance purposes. Alrighty then. Oh, that's more better. See, I cleaned all that out. It took me a while. With my razor blade and a little screwdriver putty knife, wiped it all up with a sponge. It looks way better. Now, I could tell. Um, Years ago, there was a line here where the caulking was missing a little bit. And here's a tip for you before you start caulking. Now this, this I'm not sure what color this is, kind of gray, but it almost has some green in it too. And I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna put any caulking around here or not. But if I did, I'd use probably a darkish gray caulking and here's the other thing to think about normally lots of times countertops and backsplashes are white of some sort and then you could you could finish up you could paint everything and then finish off caulking nice clean bead of white caulking here okay but in this case the walls are going to be that grayish color it looks kind of blue there doesn't it but it's not it's it's actually a nice it's a nice gray. It's called Double Click from uh, the Home Depot. And we, we quite like it. And so we're putting that in here. We're going to use a semi-gloss in here. And um, if we were to paint the walls that gray color, I wouldn't want to put white caulking down here, would I? Because the counter is this dark slate color. So if you think, oh, I'll just, I'll just caulk the gray later, well, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Gray, for some reason, dark grays and stuff, it tends to not wipe off as easily as white after you get it on there and you wipe it off with your wet finger and all that kind of stuff. It has a tendency to get on your wall, okay? And then you'd have a, a, a finger line all the way across here trying to clean it up and then after it got all dry what you're going to have to do is come back and recut in your countertop with your pre-finished paint okay so if you are going to here's the tip if you are going to want to decide to use your gray i would do it now before you before you paint or before you cut in you can do all your you can do all your, your paint painting with the paint roller first, and then you can come back, caulk this, let's say, clean it off the counter top edge, the backsplash splash edge as best you can, okay? And then if you get some up on the wall, that's okay. As long as it's nice and smooth, you let that dry, now you can cut that in. But I wouldn't suggest doing it after the fact, okay? And this one, you see the countertop stops about, oh, I don't know, 3 16 from the wall. It's like the wall bowed right here. So when they put this, when they put this up against there, uh, they had a gap uh, bigger in the middle than they did at the ends. Okay, and so I'm toying with the idea, maybe Maybe not doing anything. It's already been caulked from before, okay? And uh, maybe when I paint the wall, 
I'll just paint all the way down and get that bottom edge too and that'll be the same color. If I don't like that I can come back and caulk the gray but I, I think it's going to be okay and then then if I if I get any of my cut in paint on top of this I would just leave it until it dries and then clean it off with a little razor blade and, and get it nice and straight again. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do with that. I think I'm going to forgo the caulking for now and maybe later on uh, when I get some gray, uh, dark gray, um, I may do this stuff uh, another time. Okay, But there you go. Getting ready to paint. Well, I'm getting ready to get my paint out. And am I ready to paint now? I've got my, my craft paper on the floor. I've decided not to put a piece of craft paper on top of that or the toilet or the tub. Okay, I, I know I've got to get my kills out and do all these little spots first, right? And I've got my light fixture down. I'm ready for my roller. Got my cover off of there. If you had an air conditioning register up in the ceiling, I would unscrew that too. But the register here is underneath here in the floor. See there? Right there. Okay. But I want to I want to keep that covered because believe it or not, if you don't do that and you're painting, you'll get little droplets on on the register, believe it or not. Or you can pull the register out. But if you pull the register out, then you got to be careful not to not to step in it and twist your ankle or something. I'd leave the register down, just cover it up. Okay. And so I'm almost there. Okay. You can do it. Hey, spend some time and start doing some of these jobs on your own around the house. My YouTube channel's got thousands, and I say thousands because I know I got over 2,000 videos on my channel, over 2,700, I think. And I will never show you a video I don't think you can't do, even if, if you're a beginner DIYer. Hey, it's all, most of those videos I do on my own, and lots of times, maybe I haven't tackled something and I want to do it because I want to show you that if I can do it, you can do it. All you have to do is go to my main YouTube channel page and uh, go to where you see playlists. Click on playlists and scroll through the many topics I have on my channel. I've got over 50 topics and I put all my videos into different topics. Okay, so um, whatever topic you're looking for, you're looking for plumbing, painting, drywall, electrical, whatever it is you're looking for, if I've got it on my channel, I'll have it in those playlists as well. Okay, so go to the playlist. If you're just looking for electrical, go to the playlist. I may have 250 different videos on electrical that will teach you how to do all kinds of stuff around your house, how to fix things, how to change things, how to uh, do all kinds of stuff. Same thing with your painting, your plumbing. I'm not a plumber, but I've got I've got how to how to remove a toilet, how to install a toilet, how to uh, um, clear out a a sink clog, how to install um, a p trap, um, how to install garbage disposal. How to you know how to unclog a a, t uh, a bathtub? All kinds of stuff on there on plumbing. Same thing with painting. Now I I got all kinds of different topics. Just look on there, and if I've got it, and if it'll help you out, I will wager that I can save you a ton of money around your house. <laughs>